Well, hello everyone. As I make this video today, it is Good Friday. And if you happen to hear some squeaks, my puppy is playing in the background with one of her squeaky toys. Today, as I was getting up out of bed, you know, getting in the mode for today, just trying to figure out what I'm going to do and just getting my brain turned on, I decided to scroll through my phone. Probably not the best thing to do. But there's something that I noticed, and there was a video that popped up on my phone that made me really frustrated, to be honest. And now when I start to describe it, you'll think, why would that frustrate you? It was a celebrity. She was sitting in a chair. She was reading out loud from the Bible. And you might applaud that, right? Well, the rest of the story is she was actually mocking the words uh, that she was reading. She was picking things out of context. You know, you know how they do. And she, she began to laugh and, and began to, um, you know, mock the Bible. I thought this was an interesting day to stumble upon that, considering how, in one, on one hand, she, she believed that God didn't know what he was doing and believed that the, the words of Scripture were just random words thrown on a page but then we, we encounter something that we encounter today in remembrance of Good Friday. And I wanted to read for you a passage and talk a little bit about its significance today. And in this particular passage, it's uh, Luke chapter 23, verses 44 through 49. And you've probably heard this around this time every year. And feel like it's almost I'm legally obligated to talk about this because it's Good Friday, but really we should be talking about this on a regular basis. And then it occurred to me as I was studying a little bit more on this passage how in complete control Jesus was over this whole situation. Let me read it. It was now about noon and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. For the sun stopped shining. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Jesus called out in a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. When he had said this, he breathed his last. The centurion, seeing what had happened, praised God and said, Surely this was a righteous man. When all the people who had gathered to witness the sight saw what took place, they beat their breasts and went away. But all those who knew him including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance watching these things. I could just put that down right now and you feel the weight and the power that was in that particular passage. And I could turn off the camera right here, right now, and that'd be fine. But when you see someone like that, mocking scripture, acting like that there is no goodness in it, and then you read something like this. I think we, we see a, a very different picture. You see, Jesus was on the cross. We know that. We know he bled. We know he died. We know he suffered. He was horribly tortured. But here's the interesting part. Jesus gave up his last breath at three in the afternoon. And you might be thinking, well, okay, that's uh, too late for lunch, too early for dinner. What's the big deal here? Three in the afternoon was a, a vitally important time, especially while they were they were uh, celebrating the Passover feast there in Jerusalem. Three in the afternoon was the time that they would bring the lambs to slaughter for sacrifice to God. And to think at three in the afternoon, the the temp the temple curtain was torn top to bottom, so only God could have done it. Three in the afternoon. You see, what we learn from this is that, number one, Jesus was the sacrificial lamb. And he was prophesied throughout all of, uh, of Scripture. And number two, Jesus was in complete control. The question I have today is, do you believe that Jesus is in control? We know that he rose again, and we're about to celebrate that on Sunday. Spoiler alert. Do you believe that today? So as we go throughout today, at the rest of this weekend, I ask that you reflect on that. Reflect on the, the horrible torture that he did for you, but also remember that God is in control.